Welcome to session FIM 2010 R2 Synchronization Service, Warm Standby with the Portal. My name is David Stebbin. I'm a Premier Field Engineer uh, for Microsoft. And today we're just going to go through uh, the setup of a Warm Standby, as well as how do you, in the event of moving, uh, activating your Hot Standby, what are the steps involved in that? Um, as well as if you have the Portal involved, uh, what are the uh, items that you're going to need to adjust once you're over at your Warm Standby? Um, to make that interaction uh, complete. The four things that I, I look at when doing a warm standby, uh, making sure that your synchronization service is using domain groups. Uh, if you're using local groups, um, it's really recommended to switch to uh, domain groups. Uh, next thing is uh, making sure you have a backup of the encryption key. Um, I'll show you how to go through that uh, uh, during the demo. Um, and the next item is making sure you have scripts, DLLs, and any scheduled task uh, copied over to your warm standby. Uh, there's multiple methods of doing this. One is uh, DFS or uh, a simple copy and paste of your scripts or uh, some PowerShell to move the, that data over uh, on a weekly basis if there is a, a big change. Um, the next item is uh, making sure your server is at the same patch level uh, as well as build level. This not only means your synchronization, synchronization server should be at the same level, but again, making sure if you're at SP1, SP2 um, for your OS, uh, making sure that they fall in line, as well as any other pertinent patches uh, like .NET or uh, so forth. So let's hop over to our server. Uh, we have two servers. Uh, right now we have a production server, which has uh, the synchronization service, as well as the portal service. Um, as well as you can notice, I have the Behold suite. Uh, I currently am running uh, SP1 for uh, the portal and sync. Um, and then let's uh, take a look here real quick. And you'll notice we have some jobs running. Uh, we have multitude of uh, MAs that are running. Um, and then uh, let's go to our next thing. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is make sure we have the, the encryption key. So we're going to go to what is called Microsoft Identity Integration Server Key Management Utility. And this can be found all programs. Microsoft Forefront Identity Manager, uh, Synchronization Service Key Management. And essentially what this set will do is export the uh, encryption key so you can activate that database uh, on your warm standby when needed. Uh, so all you do is and hit next. You're going to type in the FIM Synchronization Service, service account. In my case, I'm going to service. Uh, by the default location is system32, but we're actually going to change that location and we're going to put it to this director. And I'm just going to delete it. Hit save. Next. And then there, that is our encryption key. And as you can see, it's uh, fairly easy to uh, uh, export your encryption key. Uh, the next item that we're going to do is making sure that we have our DLLs that uh, we're using for the MV extensions or rule extensions. So I am copying everything to my C colon files. Uh, as you can see, I have the extension folder. Um, and I'm just going to go grab uh, the extension folder again. I'm going to go to C program files, Forefront and Data Manager 2010. And then I'm going to go to synchronization service, extensions. And then you'll see we have a bunch of extensions. Uh, some that are built in, but some that uh, uh, are uh, definitely we need to copy over. So we're going to copy these. Uh, we're going to copy the MV extensions uh, and just copy them over here. And copy and replace for all of these. Then you see we have our folder here for MV extensions. And the next item we have, we're going to make sure we copy over the Oracle client. We are using an Oracle MA. Um, so we are going to uh, connect that up and making sure that uh, we have that installed on our hot st uh, warm standby. So next item is we're going to jump over to our warm standby. And as you can see, we have warm standby, same build, same uh, location. I've already pre-installed the Oracle client. Uh, again, this is just in preparation for uh, the warm standby. Uh, you can install all the prereqs 
if you're using a dependency like the Oracle client or uh, any other client uh, that you're using for your MAs. Uh, in this case, we are going to install the FIM sync. So we're going to open this. And we're going to run as administrator. And hit next. Leave all the defaults. And we are. And then this fem.service. Hit next. And as you're going to see, uh, by default, this is going to try to do local groups. Uh, we already have our domain groups because we have a production system in place. So all we're going to do is prepend, uh, append the uh, datum domain real quick here. And of course, you'll have to uh, make sure that you are using uh, the, the same security groups that is in the system uh, from your production. Uh, these are all out-of-the-box groups, but I have seen uh, where they actually change the group names. Uh, so here we go. We have a datum and our domains here. We're going to uh, hit next. We're going to enable firewall rules, and we're going to install. So here it's uh, actually installing some components. Um, it is actually looking at the database. We're going to get a prompt here saying that there's already a database in place. So here it's saying that their database already exists. And we're going to click uh, yes uh, because we want to uh, use that existing database. Uh, and then we're going to have a next prompt, which uh, you just need to be careful what you're going to be clicking. Uh, we're actually going to click yes. And this is the step that we definitely do not want to uh, uh, configure. So here's a, we're going to say restore configurations in previous database and provide the encryption key. Well, at this point, we don't want this warm standby to take control. So what we're going to do is we're going to say no. And what that's going to do is it's going to try to start the service against the database. Um, but it won't be able to because it doesn't have the encryption key. So here we have uh, set up our warm standby. Uh, well, one last step we're going to do is we're going to start moving that data across. So let's go to our files directory. And then as you can see, we have our extension folder. We have our access management connector, which is our Behold connector. And then we have our Oracle client. So we're going to install our Behold connector. Easy peasy. We're going to have, copy our extensions over to our extension folder. Okay, there we go. And then, let's see, what else do we have on the list? So at this point, we have our warm standby. We're going to go to our services because we don't want this service to automatically start, uh, especially if this is our warm standby. So we are going to actually change this to manual. So now that we have this in place, we're going to uh, stage some things. So we are going to activate the uh, service by running MIS activate. So from here, we're going to open up the command prompt. And I've already staged the actual uh, command for it. And I'll just paste it into the window. That way you all can see it. So 
So right now we're going to run MIS activate. We're going to take the MIS keys that we uh, uh, exported and just for uh, making sure we have the right key because we just exported the key we are just going to uh, hop over to the C, di C directory of that uh, production server and paste it in our directory here. So now we copied that over um, and this is a stage ready to go to hit enter. This will resume all control of the uh, FEM synchronization service. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go over to our production server. We're going to close everything down. And we're actually going to stop the synchronization service. So we'll stop this service. And typically what I do in, during this, because I don't want to, we're actually disable this service. So it will not start again. The next thing we're going to do, because we are uh, activating it, uh, the sync service, we need to do modify a config on the actual uh, FIM service. So we're actually going to stop this service. And then we're going to open up the configuration of this service. So we're going to go to C Program Files, Microsoft Forefront Entity Manager 2010 Service. And then we're going to open up this uh, configuration. And it's fairly easy to do what we need. So all we're going to do is find the synchronization server name. And we're going to actually put our warm standby server name there. In this case, we have uh, van fim r 2 h we're going to close this, save it. Now we're not going to start the service yet. We just want to make sure we can uh, uh, run the uh, hot standby activation. So we're going to hop over to our uh, warm standby. And we're going to actually hit enter. And this is just telling you that the you're activating this server. And we must make sure that the... Uh, service is not running uh, on any node while this is running and as well as we need to uh, activate it and this server will be deemed as activated against the database. So we're going to hit yes and now you see that it was successfully activated. So what we're going to do is actually go to our service and it is starting right now and we have uh, it started so now we can actually open up synchronization service on your warm standby and now you see everything that was once on the production server so once that's done we're actually going to uh, activate the service, the FIM manager service for the portal. So we're actually going to hit start. And then we're going to go to our, uh, back over to our service, make sure we can actually get to the FIM service. And we can. So now what we're going to do is uh, actually do a update of the schema just to make sure we can connect. So we're going to refresh schema here. Actually let me just double check here. We're going to make sure that we're in the same version. So we'll refresh schema. password and 
And as you can see, it's not using any uh, no updates, but we know we can connect. So now if we want to run a full run, so we're just going to do a full import real quick. Just want to make sure we're good to go. And as you can see, we are receiving updates from the portal. And now let's go back over to our portal server. Now that our synchronization service, we're just going to open up the portal service. And then we're just going to do search request. We, what I'm looking for here is making sure that there was a uh, update schema request uh, made uh, for the FEM service. Uh, and typically you'll see that under search request. Again, just making sure that connection is there. So it looks like yes, there was. Um, so we have a update MA FEM service request. Again, that was uh, done by the built-in service account. So we do know that there is communication back from uh, the actual synchronization service. So in the following steps we outlined uh, building the server, moving the data from your production server over to your warm standby server. Uh, once that was done we uh, installed the sync service and then from there we uh, ran an MIS activate. Um, the key thing is is uh, the MIS keys as well as uh, making sure that you have uh, proper uh, uh, clicking of yes and no uh, during the install. That way it doesn't try to activate the uh, FIM synchronization service. Now, if we wanted to fail this back, we would uh, perform the following steps in reverse order. We would stop the service, disable it, then go back to our production server and run the same uh, sequence uh, MIS activate, and then we would actually transfer the service back to our production su system. So you can see uh, how easy it is to transfer it back and forth as well as hook back up your portal server um, to the your actual synchronization service uh, without any uh, issues. That uh, concludes my uh, demonstration for a warm standby server. Again, uh, thank you.